Howdy Tinker Nerds. My mission these last few weeks has been to make my own security camera. Are you crazy? Aren't there already like a hundred apps out there that can do that? Well, yes, there is software that can do that. And yes, I may be crazy, but actually I'm just crazy. Here's where we're at so far. So far I've decided upon a camera, but almost any USB camera will do. And I've decided upon a camera controller, but almost any small form factor computer will do. The last couple episodes I spent setting up an email notification server, and to get up to speed on those, you can click this. So my goal for today is to figure out a way to make this thing see. I'm gonna be using a highly customizable computer vision program called Simple CV, which is a simplified version of OpenCV, an open source suite of computer vision tools. Now, I've never used this before, but apparently it can do a lot of things with your webcam, like manipulate images, read barcodes, recognize faces, track objects, recognize text, and of course, detect motion. So let's see if we can figure out how to make this work. Time for me to boot up my trusty Raspberry Pi, open up a terminal, and update the software. Now before I can install Simple CV, I gotta install these dependencies first. And then I made a folder to store all my files in. And I was going to create my program in a Python virtual environment, but I ended up failing miserably at it. So I'm just gonna leave that to the Python experts. All right, moving on. I then installed the Simple CV program as well as these two required packages, and then typing Simple CV starts the program, and running this command should take a snapshot. But instead, it gives me this error. And after many, many hours of Googling, I found that this is due to using a Raspberry Pi PiCam, and the fact that by default, the Raspberry Pi doesn't have the right drivers installed to properly run software with it. Anyway, it was suggested to install this UV4L driver to fix things. To do that, you gotta add the UV4L key and then edit the app sources list to add this UV4L repository. Now let's update the software again and it should allow us to install the UV4L software and its dependencies. At this point, I'm kinda regretting my decision to use this blasted Pi cam. Anywho, after starting it and giving SimpleCV another go, we have success, my lucky little lemurs. With that out of the way, time to start coding the program. So I'm gonna make a new Python script called SimpleCV, and I'm gonna import the entire SimpleCV library. I'm initializing the camera like we did in our test, and then I can display it on screen and save it as a file. So running the code will show an output of the image file in your program folder. Adding commands after the image can manipulate it and edit it on the fly, but we'll mess around with that later. To make this interactive, I first set a static display size and then put the code in a loop so that it gets a constant webcam feed. Within the loop, I can check the display for events such as mouse clicks. So then we can say that if there's a left mouse click, then save the image. And then we can make another simple while loop that gives each one a unique name. This makes a nice little camera app, but what I'm wanting to do is detect motion. Well, a cool feature of SimpleCV is that it can mathematically compare two images. So if we import two of our saved images, we can literally subtract one from the other to look for the differences. Then to enhance the differences, we can convert them to grayscale and increase the threshold. Inverting it just highlights the changes in white. Hopefully you can see where I'm going with this. So if we swap our camera feed back in and put a half second pause in between them, we now have two live stream images to compare for differences. If we want to determine how much has changed between the images, we can take all the pixel values within each image and dump them into a matrix. Then we can take the mean average to see how much has changed. Now instead of clicking, we can say that if the mean has changed by a certain threshold, then save the image. And let's just make this threshold a variable so that we can easily adjust it later. So now whenever enough motion is detected to pass the threshold, it should automatically save the image. The last step is gonna be adding email and streaming capabilities. To do that, I'm gonna copy over the email program that I made in my last video and edit it so that this entire section of code is now a definition called Gmail. And then it's passed an image variable that it can now attach. Then back in our program, I'm gonna import this mail module. And since I don't wanna get emails for every snapshot, I'm gonna set up a timer system that takes an initial time reading and stores a wait time. 
Then each time the loop iterates, I'm also gonna capture a new time point. Now I can make another if loop that checks to see if the current time is past the initial time plus the wait time. And if so, I can reset the initial time, get the current image name, and send it to the email program. Done. Finally, turning this into a live webcam stream is actually really simple. Just make a JPEG streamer variable and at the end of the while loop, save the image to the stream. Now from a different computer, I can remotely monitor the webcam and get email alerts whenever motion is detected. Let me warn you that this code is very basic and very buggy only intended it as a starting point and not as a finished product. If you want a more full featured example, you can check out my code on GitHub and fork it if you want to add to it or make it better. Next time I'm going to see if I can get the Python program to auto start with the Raspberry Pi and then I'm going to shove it all into this nice little dummy camera casing. If you need more help, you can get a step by step guide on the project page at this link. What idea would you like me to cover next? Submit or vote for your favorites at tinkernut.com slash ideas. Click here to watch my last video, and if you'd like to support my show, please feel free to like, subscribe, comment, follow me on social media, or donate at tinkernut.com slash donate. You could also click on an ad or two if you feel inclined. All right, that's it for this tutorial. For more, go to tinkernut.com.